Uh, now, uh, after a success, successful stint as part of the uh, Wicked So Solid crew, I actually went solo. Uh, first as a singer and then as an actor. And now you're singing again. Now I'm singing again, or rapping again, yeah. Um, just released a new album called oh, Ashley Waters. Got it here? Got it here. Self-entitled. Um, and yeah, I mean, basically there's been a lot of things that have gone on since my last album and, and kind of being with Soul Solid Crew. And this album here is kind of documenting all that, really. As it's been released, though, one of the first things I read about it was, this is going to be the last music you do. Yeah, I did say that in passing. <laughs> <laughs> I might regret saying that, but yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've opened a production company, um, which I've been running for the last four years, and um, a management company, so I'm managing a lot of other artists that are up and coming at the moment. And Why do you want out, though? Or do, or... Just to, to give them more focus and to give them more of my time, really, because it's really hard to dedicate yourself to them while I'm, I'm touring and doing stuff for my own projects as well. So I thought I'd have a little break or maybe kind of pack it in for a bit. But, I mean, this album's going so well at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you might change your mind. I might change my mind. Oh, very wise. I, I, I will cross my heart there. I think it's a wicked tune. Thank wicked you very tune. much. Appreciate that. Um, Appreciate that. And I saw Biggins throwing some shapes down the end. Absolutely yeah. great, great, Show me some great shapes. sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. I tried, I tried, man. Safe blood. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you spoken to her since uh, she was in Celebrity? I have, life? yeah. We've had some in depth conversations. I'm a big, big brother fan, so I, um, I watch it religiously and I actually do. I'm, a, I'm an analyst for a radio station that I don't know if I can mention. Yeah, mention it, mention it. Yeah. Um, radio One Extra, okay, so okay. I do... Um, I analyse Big Brother every morning after it's come on in the evening. and um, It was amazing. I think she went in there and she did really well. Uh, she had great. a hard time from Coolio, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, I mean... I think any woman would really... I was just about really to say. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit of a fiend. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yeah, Muti, I think she did really well. She kind of... She was pretty much herself. Um, but I thought... I mean, I thought she would have left a lot earlier than she did. Well, I was going to because she, she, she went out of her own accord. And I mean, it begs the question: I mean, did she enjoy herself in there? I but... think she did. I think she did. But it just got to the point where she she missed her kid, she missed home, she missed her lifestyle, um, and just wanted to get back to it. So it was kind of job done. Let's now, talking on. to kids, talking to kids, your lot are on your album. Yes, they are. All of them. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. How many have you got? I've got three: um, nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a five-year-old. Um, and yeah, they I kind of I got them on the album. They, they're not really as into music as as I am. But my, well, give my it youngest, time at three. Yeah, I mean my, my youngest five year old. He he really wants to do everything that I do, you know. So it kind of started with him, and we brought him into the studio. It's my two boys there, yeah, <laughs> Shane and Panera. And um, yeah, they we just got them on the track. Um, and they, they love it, they love it, you know? They've got their own copies of the CDs, they take it to school. I bet they show do. their friends and stuff, so it's really cool. I bet they do. And uh, you, you've got a son, I think, Shayson, is that right? Who's, who's got the... Uh, Shay on. Shay on, yeah. Who's, he's a footballer as well, is that right? Yeah, he, he, he's obsessed with football at the moment. Um, big Arsenal fan. Been playing for... for I told yeah. me he plays for Arsenal. I think he's only a kid, he yeah, can't no, be playing for was. Arsenal. When he, when he was a lot younger, actually, when he was, like, six, so he was playing for, like, the, the youngins, the real young team, and he was training with them. He didn't actually play any matches. Um, but now he's playing for school and another team on the weekend as well, our local team. So he's doing football at least, like, four, three or four times a week, which is really cool, and I'm excited. I mean, if he can make... 250,000 a week. <laughs> I'm not going to complain, do you know what I mean? And that would explain why you want to give up the music. Yeah. Yeah. Why bother? <laughs> Get the kids working for exactly. you. Exactly. Get the kids working. Um, I mean, the, the, one of the things I was really interested in, in fact, the last time you were here, we were talking about acting. Yeah. Um, and... I, 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 well, I know you've done lots of films and TV. Was that was acting your first love or was it? Was it, it was my first love. I started off at Sylvia Young Theatre School when I was like six years old, doing tap and ballet and jazz and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of where everything stemmed from, really, where my love for music came from. Kind of, I, was, I did the West End a lot when I was young. I did the, um, Oliver at the London Palladium when it first opened with um, Jonathan Price. How old were you then? Um, I probably was about. 10 or 11 years oh, old. Yes, yeah, so it was ages ago. And um, Carmen Jones at the Old Vic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, print, um, I was at the Prince Edward Theatre. I did Children of Eden there playing Abel. And yeah, so I kind of I did, I did a lot of musicals and kind of that's how I got into music, really. It stemmed from that. Because Sylvia Young, I mean, there's Ashley, did there, you, yeah. did you, oh, well, yeah, I was going to yeah, say, yeah, did yeah. you train with Sylvia Young? Did yeah, you? I did. I, I only went part time um, and I wasn't full time. So I went to normal school and, and during the week and I say normal school because it's a very different school. Yeah. And um, to Sylvia's on the weekend. She's great, isn't she, Sylvia? Lovely, lovely. She was like, um, 
She's like a, an auntie to me, I yeah. should say. So, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Did you have any other famous people or have become famous since you... I think there were a few there. There were a few Spice Girls there. I think Emma B. Few Spice Girls. Few Spice Girls there. Um, I was, I'm told Amy Winehouse was there at the same time, but because I really? only went on weekends, you, yeah. you only saw people. We wouldn't recognise yeah. you at weekends, would you? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he's a terrible man. He's a terrible man. I'm not, I'm not going to take you. <laughs> I would have asked him a question for our audience, Harry. Um, hey, well, joining me this morning is Carla Kass. Hey, what's your question? Um, does anyone still call you Asher D? Or have you left that part of your life behind you? I know. Oh, uh, loads of people still call me Asher D. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, the whole thing with calling the album Ashley Waters and, and changing my name was really to kind of get the people that buy into my films to buy into my music as well. Because some of the people that watch my movies haven't got a clue that <laughs> you're the same music. person. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of bringing both worlds together, really. So, I mean, feel free to call me Asha, Asha D or Ashley or Ash or whatever you want. Waters? Waters. <laughs> yeah, Waters. <laughs> <laughs> now, as well as her roles in BBC One's Hustle, and I thought you were brilliant, Billy Bond, by the way. It's a great, great, great show, one. great show. And the Brit Fit Bullet Boy, which I think earned you a Best Newcomer Award. Yeah. Uh, Ashley's also spent time in Hollywood, hanging out with a certain Curtis Jackson, alias rapper 50 Cent, on the big screen, in fact, in Get Rich or Die Trying. Now, I know 50 wanted you in that, didn't he? Uh, he yeah, calls he, you his cousin, is that right? Yeah, his he cousin. did. I mean, it was like, um, I sent a tape, out to the States for 50. It was basically me rapping on a tape. No acting, just rapping. Um, and he picked me for the film based on, based on that, really. Um, it took a year for them to get back to me, so I just got a phone call late at night one night, and it was like, yeah, you're flying out, basically, yeah. in the next two days. So I was over the moon, and it was really good. I met him, really down-to-earth guy. Um, I've heard this brilliant, uh, yeah. it's true, this brilliant story about a watch that you went out and bought a watch. I went out, um, it was my birthday. It was my birthday on the 30th of June, and I was out in New York, and I went out to famous jewellers, Jacobs, Ooh. to buy myself a, a fancy watch with some bling in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I went to Jacobs, <coughs> bought the watch, got back to the film set, and showed it to 50 because I was chuffed with myself and I was like, yeah, look at this watch. And he was like, well, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and you could have done much, much better than that. And he actually took me back to Jacobs, um, played, I mean, he played a little trick on Jacobs. He said that I was his cousin from England um, and how could they treat me like this? And he sent me in there with money for my birthday and this is what, <laughs> you, this is what you gave my little cousin. And um, he pulled out, I mean, thousands of, thousands of dollars from his pocket, gave it to Jacob and said, Ash, pick whatever you want. And the kind of the glass screens came down on the, on the most expensive watches. And I was like, <laughs> like, a, like a baby in a candy Easy shop. Easy to so. please, Ashley. Yeah, Easy yeah. To um, it was really good, though. It was cool. Are you yeah, wearing it today, Ashley? I'm not. I actually don't wear it at all. <laughs> because, too scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. People are going to try and cut my hand. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the trainers, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the trainers, not the watch. Uh, Ashley, I was just, you've turned your life around incredibly, mm -hmm. haven't you? Yeah. Do you look look at look at uh, look back and think was you know that you seem to have lived two very different lives and the way you describe from what I've read before that experience of going into prison thinking about who you are but mm. also doing NVQs and doing really kind of also mm. I mean what made you change was it the thought of your kids or Definitely, what prison gave you actually the, the thought of my kids was one of the strongest things I think that kind of ran through my brain every day and kind of not being around them. And as well, I mean, not being fathered myself, because I didn't grow up with my father at all. I, I rarely saw him, so... Which and is I know so it has, common, isn't it? Yeah, but it had a huge effect on, on how I socialised, how I, how I became a man, how I grew up, and I just understood that I needed, needed to be around my kids all the time, especially my boys, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was really hard not, not being around them, and also knowing that I came out of prison and pretty much no one wanted to work with me because what they thought and what they'd read. So you're a gangster. Yeah, or um, so I realised then that it was, it was about me showing myself to everyone and being a bit more real with myself, you know, and rather than kind of portraying this, this image that everyone got from So Solid. So, um, and I well, think it's what... an extraordinarily important story, what you've mm. just told, for so many reasons, because so many young black men 
are brought up without dads yeah. and then to realize the effect of that but also to say you know prison doesn't have to make you worse it can make you think yeah. oh, most definitely i think it's all down to you and your mind you're an amazing you know, role model you that you've that. done this actually and you got involved with the devil the taylor off. trust as well haven't you so, yeah so. yeah i mean i grew up in peckham so um it's pretty close to my heart the whole Damalola Taylor story and, and kind of what went on there and um, it's been an ongoing thing since it happened and Peckham's is a changed place now you know because of uh, uh, the effects and, and the things that have, people have tried to achieve since that incident um, so yeah I mean I, I've been heavily involved in, in the promotion of, of kind of the, the charity um, and getting other youths to, to be involved in the schemes you. that we're doing so is, is that different. why you've decided to promote other people do you think other than yeah, yourself. Good good I mean, question. my business was, the AD82, my production company, was born out of me wanting to give opportunity to others. Um, I know how hard it is coming through it myself uh, yeah. to, to get a chance to shine and to show the, the talent that you have. So um, it's just a way of me giving other people a spotlight. Obviously, I can't give everyone a spotlight. No. But you work your I way want through to shake you your hand. I know, well I can done. see, I can Thank see. Really? It's very rare. Very rare that I see Yasin so enthused. I really do.